So uh, the two exercises we finished and already done. So the next question is how can we apply the one of the purpose in this chapter, if we have the Bernoulli equation, how can we apply to understand the velocity and the pressures under the flow? Okay, so uh, the last week or on Wednesday, I have one exercise, uh, the figure showing here, I tell you uh, if I put the tube and we make the hole, and then I have a diffraction height and I can directly to estimate how large pressures at the location A, right? But right now, our purpose is different. We would like to apply the Bernoulli equations and then we, our purpose right now change it to the velocity. So how can we measure the velocity on the flow field, okay? And usually the velocity located at the V0 in here. So we have a V0 in here, right? And the, sometimes we call that the V0 is the, the free stream, the free stream velocity. That indicates the, the velocity in here didn't disturb by any object. It's just a free, free flow. So this is the free string velocity, okay? And the, the V1, I highlight the V1. So we have the V1 uh, in here, right? This is the V1. And I always tell you, locate location point one, the velocity is always equal to zero because the point in here is the stagnation point, 停滞点, okay? So for this idea, if we, we can observe the, the diffraction, so you can see there are some L diffraction high, and then we have the water depth D. How can we estimate the, the V0? The V0 is our purpose, okay? So the idea is quite simple. We, we apply the Bernoulli equation. So the first idea we check the point two to the point one, they are located at the same street line. So we can apply the Bernoulli equations. So we have a P, we have the P zero, and we know that we need to plus the gamma Z zero, and then the plus the two over low V zero square will equal to the P one plus the gamma z1 and the plus the two over low v1 square, right? And we know that the stagnation point at the location one. So we don't have the v1, okay? So we cancel out the v1 items because the location one is a stagnation point. And then we, because the string line is a horizontal line, so we, the v1 should be equal to v0, right? So the elevation didn't change, okay? So purpose is the how large the pressure in here, uh, how large the velocity in here. So we just uh, keep the, the velocity items. So this is a two over low V zero square will equal to the P one minus the P zero, right? So how can we know that the P1 and the P2, uh, P1 and the P0? The P is static pressures. So we know that the, the P1, how large static pressure for the P1? So we know that the P1 should be equal to the gamma L plus D, right? Because the depth is, is uh, L plus the D. Because the one point is connected with the tube, so the diffraction height is equal to the pressure for the, the point one. And the, the what the, is the P0? The P0 is far away from the tube in here. So the pressure, static pressure, only related to the water depth, right? Only related to the, uh, not the water, just the liquid depth. 
So the, the static pressure is equal to the gamma D, right? So we put the P1 and the PD to go back to the formula in here. So we have the gamma L plus D minus the gamma D, right? So we just uh, uh, reorganize the equation is equal to two over low V zero square and uh, gamma L. So we reorganize the equation is equal to two gamma L divided the, the density. And the gamma is low G. So finally, we know that the V zero is equal to the root of the two G L. Okay. So let's follow this formula. We can very rapidly estimate the velocity flow just based on the parameter is uh, how large the diffraction height. So if we know that the L, and then we can estimate the flow velocity very quickly. Okay, just based on the equation showing here. Okay, so you you need to keep in mind for these equations. So, but uh, the disadvantage for this tube, because you put the tube inside the flow field, so maybe the tube will disturb the flow velocity because you just uh, put the, the tube inside in your flow field. So maybe the flow condition will disturb by the tube, right? But the previous exercise, previous slide showing the static tube, in that case, we didn't insert into the flow. So in that way, didn't disturb the flow conditions. So different methods have a different uh, advantage. So, but for this, this measure tool, we have the limitation is the, if your tube height is not enough, you cannot measure the very high speed flow velocity. Okay. 所以这边我们就要讲你其实有很多种方式可以去量到压力差或是量到速度可是不同的方法它有一些不同的优缺点像刚才这个方法没有什么明确的缺点不过它把 可是如果你插的那个压力计的高度不够，那当流速太快，你就量不到。哦，所以不同的方法有它不同的限制。那这种方法我们叫做stagnation tube 就是自流管。OK，因为它仰赖的技术就是用自流点去换算那压力有多大，然后用压力去换算那速度有多快这样子。OK， so uh but the most famous uh。Method to measure the flow velocity, we call that the p tot Chinese叫做皮托管. So we have the p tot tube. So how ideas for the p tot So we have the inner and the outer pipe. So and the inner pipe, the behavior is similar to the. Stagnation tube, 自流管. So we just put the inner tube is the stagnation tube, and the outer, the outer tube is the static, static pressure tube. So we combine two different tube together, and but our purpose is the same. So, what is the Advantage, the advantage for the p tot we can measure the flow velocity under the compression environment. Under the compression environment, so this is the the idea when we use the p tot tube. Okay, so how can we use the p tot tube? So the following slide we need to uh, prove the formula showing here. 
So you can see the formula showing here. Okay, the difference is in follow this formula, we need to know how large pressure difference we have. And uh, we know that the fluid density, so we can compute the velocity. Okay, so the key knowledge in here is how large pressure difference. So that means the pitot tube will have, will provide the per pressure difference. And uh, you have the pressure difference, you can estimate the velocity. Okay, just based on the formula showing here, here, okay? So the key knowledge is how can we compute the delta P? How can we compute the delta P? So you can double check the 39 in here. We have the 39 and going down and the flow in here. So the yellow line is our 39. And the two points I pick out in here. So I pick out the point one and the point two. And the point one is the stagnation point. And the point two is connected to the static pressure. Connected to the static pressures. Okay, so the same uh, straight line, so we can apply the Bernoulli equation for the point one to point two. So we just write down the equation P1 plus the gamma Z1 plus the 2 over low V1 square, right? And we'll equal to the P2 and the plus the gamma Z2 and the plus the 2 over low V2 square. And the, right now the formula in here, the purpose we would like to know is the V2. So how can we compute the V2? And because we know that the point one is the stagnation point, so we don't have the V1, right? We don't have the V1 velocity. So in, in that way, we know that the two over low, our purpose is V2 squared, will e to the, equal to the P1 plus the gamma Z1, okay? And the minus the P2 plus the gamma Z2, right? And the, we can know that the, the for the P1 plus the gamma 1 is the piezometric pressure for the point 1, right? And the, the P2 in here is the piezometric for the point 2. Okay? So the piezometric pressure difference will equal to the 2 over law V2 squared. So we know that the V2 is equal to the two times piezometric pressure difference and the divided the law and then you take the root. Okay, so the idea in here is similar, is as the same as the formula we write down in here. So the key knowledge for the pitot tube, the pitot tube will provide you how large piezometric pressure difference. And then you can directly to estimate the velocity in your flow field. Okay, so the pitot guan, it doesn't use the Tyson to tell you. It will let you change the speed. It can directly let you change the pressure difference. Then you can directly take this company to get the speed in the flow field. OK， 所以皮托管提供的是压力的变化。OK， so we have the delta P and then we can based on the equation showing here to estimate the flow velocity. So we have the exercise in here. How can we apply the pitot tube ideas? OK， so as you can see, this is our uh, pitot. This is our pitot tube. And the connect connect with the static pressure. We call that the manometer. We connect the man manometers. So what the problem in this exercise? We need to answer what is the kerosene velocity in the pipe. The kerosene is no. And then in in a pipe. So our question is that we have the velocity going down and how large the velocity we have. 
So we measure the, the velocity going down, how large the speed. Okay? So because we apply the pitot tube to measure the pressure difference, so you need to know the key knowledge is the what is the delta P in our questions. What is the delta P in our questions? So we can apply the hydrostatic equations. As you remember, we have the P1. We know that there is the P1 and there is the P2, okay? So if you still remember hydrostatic equation, we have the P1 and then we will from the V1 move to the point in here, right? Because it's going down. So the pressure increase. So we need to plus the gamma, what is the material for the gamma? The gamma is the kerosene, okay? So here we use the gamma K and then multiply the Z1 minus the Z2, right? And then we found this point going down in here. The length is L and the material is also kerosene. So we plus the gamma K we plus the gamma k and multiply the L high. And right now we move the, this point and the going up to here, going up to here, because it is going up. So the pressure decrease, so we have the minus. And what is the gamma material? The gamma material in here is the mercury, right? So we here we use the gamma n and multiply the y, and we found this point going up to here, going up to here. So how the material in here we have, because going up, so we, we use the minus, and the material in here is to be the kerosene. So this is a gamma K, and how about the length? Length is L minus Y, okay? L minus Y from this point to going up to this point. And the, the, based on the sta static, hydrostatic equation, we know that the final pressure is will equal to P2, right? Because we're going back to here, and the elevation for the point two in here is the same. So we go, in, go back to the P2. So you just uh, uh, sum uh, reorganize the equation here the P1 plus the gamma K Z1 minus the gamma K Z2 and the plus the gamma K L minus gamma N Y minus the gamma K L plus the gamma K Y and it will equal to the P2, right? Will equal to the P2. And then you can cancel out some same parameters. It's the gamma KL positive, and the here is the gamma KL negative. Okay, so you can cancel out, and the, you can put the the uh, I I keep the P one and the plus the gamma K D one together. This is our piezometric pressure for the P one. And uh, I, I move the P2 to the left hand side. So you can rewrite. Here is the P2 plus the gamma KD2, right? In, in this item, combined with these items. This is our piezometric pressure for the P2, uh, for the point 2. And then we just move some uh, gamma. This is the gamma n, and this is the gamma k, and the both parameter have the same y. Okay, so we move to the left, right hand side. You have the gamma n minus the gamma k. Okay. Okay, so the the left hand side in here is our delta p. Okay, so we know that the delta p. Delta P will equal to the uh, the Y and the multiply the gamma N minus the gamma K. And then we know that the, the gamma N and the gamma K 
if we only have the SG, we only have the SG. So why multiply the gamma water, multiply the SG N and the minus the gamma W S G K right? You can rewrite the equation in here because we only have the SG. We only have the SG. Okay, so we just take the gamma outside. So Y gamma W and the SG N minus the SG K. Okay, so we have a delta P and how can we compute? How can we compute the velocity? So based on the, the, the equation, we know that the V velocity will equal to two times delta P and divided the density root. So this is our velocity, right? And we know that the further the density in here, because the flow is the kerosene. So we need to use the low K, right? We use the linear low K. And then we know that the low K will equal to the SGK multiply the low W, right? So we can put the number inside. Okay. So, uh, so uh, we just uh, put the density, go back to the equations. Okay. So, <laughs> 